Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to another Dead by Daylight video from The Puffalope. That, that's my TikTok, by the way. It's The Puffalope. Why? Because, uh, well, someone took it. So it took Buffalo. Today, I will be making a gigantic, a ginormous video on how to counter every singular killer in Dead by Daylight. Uh, lots of people have already done videos like this, or like tips against killers, but this is mainly going to be me rambling about how I usually play against those killers, so I, I think it's going to be kind of different. I really wanted to go for this rambly style because I just feel like it's going to be very different. It's not just going to be me being like, against nurse, double back into blink, and against peak, do not get a trap on head. You know, I just feel like it's easier to understand if you're listening to someone talk about their own experiences when they're up against certain killer. Most of these tips are going to consist around looping the killer and what I consider uh, countering a killer is being able to loop them for a long time. There are also going to be general tips against certain killers that will help you escape the game and that will also be assuming that you already know uh, how the killers I'm talking about work and how their powers work. I do explain some obscure mechanics about their powers during the video but uh, it is important that you know generally what the killers do. And yeah I hope you guys enjoy this long ass video there is also going to be uh, timestamps in the description of the video so if you're only interested in hearing me hearing me talk about the Wesker or the Dredge then you can skip to it you know and that's it have fun with me rambling about killers against the trapper you want to try your best to avoid the part of the map where the trapper spawned at because that's where he is the most likely to place traps one thing I like doing is chasing the trapper around and disarming all the traps that he puts down because since he's an m1 killer if he commits to chasing you he's wasting his precious setup time and if he just allows you to disarm the traps then he you know he's not gonna have the setup <laughs> also shack is most likely gonna be trapped so stay away from it or just go there and disarm the traps and some traps if they're poorly placed can be avoided by going to the corners of them so look out for these against the wraith the main thing i do is the wraith tech and if you want to know what that is you should watch my text video remember that you can burn him out of his power so that means if the wraith is invisible you can always use your flashlight to you know burn him and stun him. Also, it's very good to remember that if you stun the killer while he's invisible, the stun lasts for way longer. A lot of Wraith players don't know that and they just run through paths because they're trying to bait you to, you know, drop them. And th if you get the stun, he's going to be stunned for a long time and that's great. Since Wraith is a hit and run killer, you want to stay away from your teammates because then he won't be able to chain the hits. And don't ever try outrunning the Wraith. Find the closest pallet or the closest window and try to do the Wraith tech. Against the hillbilly, the FOV tech is very, very useful. Whenever he pulls up the chainsaw, run at him and then run away. If the killer is not very seasoned or not very good at the killer he's playing, he's most likely going to lose sight of you and then at that point, the chainsaw is already going to be close to burning. So remember that for the player, it's very hard to control Billy's chainsaw. But if you make tight turns around trees and other medium sized objects, you can most likely get away from the, from the chainsaw. But do remember that a lot of Billy players like running chainsaw movement speed add-ons. What that does is it makes Billy essentially a blight version 2 but faster and so be careful with long loops because he might catch you off guard with the speed. Against the Myers there's always the Myers tech but it's not very useful it's just that whenever you don't have anywhere to hide and he's stalking you you can always go through him and you know try to get out of his uh line of sight. Try your best to stay behind objects when he's trying to stalk you, but remember that it's very, very hard to like run away from the stalk, so don't be mad at yourself if you give him tier 2 for example. Myers is at the end of the day just an M1 killer, so do your best to you know try to get stuns with pallets and stuff. When he is in tier 3 though, his lunge is way bigger, so you gotta be careful with that when you try to go for windows and stuff. Don't greed pallets that much against Myers tier, tier 3. This is very intuitive, but a lot of people do this. If Myers is in tier 3 don't waste your time healing up you know he's already gonna one shot you anyway so don't heal up also Myers doesn't have any means to traverse the map fast whenever you're up against a killer that does not have a way to traverse the map fast hiding is a very efficient way to go about winning against the, the game against them so if you notice that the Myers is coming for you maybe try hiding if you don't feel very comfortable to pig. Also, you can very easily tell the difference between a Myers with Tombstone and a Myers without Tombstone because he's way slower. If you notice that he's way slower and he's in tier 3, then you should be hiding in lockers to not allow him to more you and instead grab you out of the locker. It is way better to be hooked than uh, morried, if you didn't know. Going against the hag can be very annoying, but there's a lot of ways you can harass her 
by just being comfortable with being chased. Remember that she's a 4.4 killer, so that means if she commits to you, she's most likely gonna lose the game. So what you can do is you can go up to the traps and bait the hag into chasing you, and if she does, you can crouch to avoid triggering her traps, and you can also burn the traps out of existence with a flashlight. Also, whenever any of your teammates are hooked, no matter where the killer is, he's being camped. So always be ready to bait unhooking in order to get the hag to swing. Do not get grabbed, because that's the only way the hag wins the game. <laughs> when you're up against a doctor, the best way to go about looping a doctor is pre-dropping pallets, because if the doctor is good at the game, he's always going to know when to shock you so you can't drop the pallet. But that's way too boring. So the best way to loop the doctor is constantly changing loops and trying your best to get in his head. By that I mean just never dropping the pallet when he starts shocking, maybe fake dropping the pallet and stuff. That always, you know, extends the chases. But the, but the best way to go about that is holding W, because Again, he doesn't have any movement abilities, but you can't really hide against a doctor because of the shocks. So yeah, the best way to do it is just pre-dropping pallets if you're not comfortable. Also blast Jin's out because uh, items are pretty much useless against a good doctor as he will most likely keep you in tier three all game. So yeah, blast those, gen those gens out, boy. Fake dropping pallets is a very useful strategy against Huntress players because whenever you reach a pallet, the Huntress is gonna try to hit you with the hatchet while you were in the animation of dropping the pallet. So if you make her think that you're gonna drop the pallet and she pulls up the hatchet, that means that she's gonna first respect the pallet and then she's gonna be slowed down by pulling up the hatchet. If you don't drop the pallet and just keep running, then you get another loop and you extend the chase. You also don't get hit, which is the most important part of this. I don't know why I didn't mention it. Remember that Huntress is also a 4.4 killer so you can greed pallets a whole lot more than when you're versing other killers. Also be very careful with R rating add-ons and cross map snipes because that's 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 when Huntress is very scary. For the same reasons as Billy, FOV Tech works wonders against the Bubba. Running at him when he pulls up the chainsaw and then running away sometimes will give you a free escape because the killer might be lost. If Bubba revs his chainsaw mid loop and he's not completely on top of you, you can most of the time greed the pallet and keep looping the object as he will most likely not catch up to you due to the fact that he has to be careful to not hit objects and go into tantrum. So he cannot hug the loops as tight as you can because again, he doesn't want to hit the objects. If you want to hit the objects, in fact, that is, the, that is the best way to loop anything because you want to be close to it so you're quote unquote faster than the killer. Against the Freddy, you want to try your best to stay awake, but don't go out of your way to do it. If the clock is too far away from your current position, it is more efficient to stay asleep and pay attention to the lullaby. Also remember that awake teammates can wake you, so do that. Careful with Freddy teleporting mid chase, though it's very rare that he's going to do that. Also, this is a placebo effect but Freddy has long arms, man. <laughs> so don't greed resources too much as he will pull off those weird long Freddy hits and you're gonna be confused. You also wanna chain loops or hold W as much as you can because his only anti-loop is the blood snares. If you don't notice many blood snares, uh, he most likely has fake pallets. So yeah, try to keep in mind which pallets are real and which pallets are not real. Perks like Windows of Opportunity helps a lot with this because whenever you're awake, you're not gonna see the fake pallets and then if you you just see pallets popping up. If there are windows of opportunity, then you know those pallets are fake. Against the pig, if you see her crouching mid chase, she's going for the ambush. The best way to counter it is by running away from the loop as soon as you hear the roar. If you find yourself in a situation where you cannot run away from the roar, a lot of pig mains like mind gaming the power by faking going to one direction and then quickly switching mid ambush. So keep that in mind and try not to fall for it. Careful when doing gens right after a teammate is downed. Sometimes 99ing gens is the best way to avoid getting your teammates heads blown up. When you're up against the clown it's very important that you disconnect. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or am I? Pre-drop every single pallet and pray to god that he doesn't particularly like chasing you or you're not gonna have a good time. There is absolutely no counterplay against his bottles. You can't really dodge them either. But clown is just an M1 killer so Again, no real way to traverse the map, so hiding is insanely powerful against them. But mostly, disconnect. Ever since Iron Will was gutted, Spirit has become increasingly harder to deal with because now you have no way of lowering your moans and your injured sounds, other than off the record, because if you didn't know, whenever you're 
under the effect of off the record, you also have old iron will, so you have 100% noise reduction. If you don't have any of them, the best way to counter the spirit nowadays is making some weird sporadic movements around walls and stuff, because sometimes your moans are so loud that it sounds for the killer that you're way closer than you actually are. And if you put walls between you and the killer, it sometimes is going to confuse them, but there's no way to actually control whether the spirit is going to be on top of you or, you know, at the other side of the wall. Also, slow vaulting pallets and windows is very powerful because since you don't make any sound, the killer cannot really know on which side of the window or pallet you're at. Crouching also makes your moans a little bit quieter, so if you find yourself in a situation where you can't do any of the other two uh, counters I offered you, you can crouch and then pray for your life. Against the ghost face, there's really no easy way around it. You gotta be paying attention to your surroundings pretty much all the time. But this can be very hard, especially when you're playing against uh, smart ghost face players. They're gonna stalk you from like leaning over walls and stuff. So, uh, chances are, you're gonna get exposed. So what you can do, is be prepared. So before you get on the gen, uh, look around the gen, and try to find the pallets and windows that are close to it, so whenever you do get exposed, you know where to run to. A lot of the kills Ghostface players get is when they expose someone and they had no clue that that was going to happen and then they get an instant down because they didn't know where to run to. Also keep in mind that if you do expose the Ghostface, he becomes just a normal M1 killer. So you can do the same thing I mentioned that you could do against the Trapper, which is just chase the Ghostface around and keep exposing him all the time. That's going to make it so the killer is forced into chasing you and if you're comfortable enough with being looped by an M1 killer, you can loop him for a long time and that's you know, already good enough, you're you're wasting his time. Exposing the ghost face can be very janky and weird, but try your best to dig his old Facebook account where you can clearly find pictures of him teabagging survivors and being to- Oh, uh, sorry, I meant to uh, center him on your screen and aim down a little bit as the exposing area is a little bit above your character's head, but um, yeah, the pictures are real by the way. Against Demogorgon, the same tips I gave for Huntress apply, so fake dropping pallets and making him start the shred animation is your best bet to not get caught instantly, because Demo will break the pallet instantly if you give if he shreds at it. So if you fake dropping the pallet and he thinks that you're actually going to drop it and pulls up the shred, he is slowed down and he's going to have to respect the pallet, then, you know, you can just go another loop, just like the Huntress. Demo is a very balanced killer, and being chased by him is just plain fun. So try your best to win the mind games and call him a good boy every time he misses a shred because that's that's the funnest part. Be very careful when you're at check though as the demo guardian can easily hit you with a shred when you're going for the window. It's almost inevitable. Even if you get the fast vaults and he shreds from like five miles away, he will still get it. So what you can do is fake going for the window and then get out of the way when he, when he shreds. This also applies to like every other window in the game, but the shack one is the one where most demo guardian players will you know, try to shred you. Also, ceiling portals is a very good strategy in the late game when it's only one generator left, but mostly leave them alone as it's most likely a waste of time to seal them if they're not like immediately harmful. Against the Oni, <laughs> listen very carefully, okay? Do not give him a free first hit. Your teammates will thank you forever. Pre-drop every single pallet if you have to. Delaying Oni's first hit is like the most important thing when you're up against a good Oni player. Once Oni gets his power, he's just an unstoppable force. And you gotta remember that you're not an immovable object, so get out of the way, man. <laughs> but do remember that as with most movement abilities that killers have in this game, it is very hard to control for the killer player. So tight turn and 360s are very very useful. Try your best to avoid them by like making weird movements and make, maybe making the killer you know confused and then he hits a wall and then you get distance. Hiding when Oni gets his power is also very good but it's boring. I personally think that looping Oni on power is like one of the funnest experiences in DBD but it's up to you depending on how sweaty you're feeling that day. You know, as with most projectile killers, it's mainly up to how good at aiming the killer player is. You can try to avoid the shots and be unpredictable, but you can only prevent it up to a certain point. You know, when you do get shot and reeled in, you can get a lot of distance on the killer because he's a 4.4 and also has to reload after shooting you. So W key is your best friend. When a Deathslinger gets a shot on you and you know for a fact that he will not be able to follow it up with a hit, it, listen to me, just when you know for a fact that he will not be able to hit you after shooting you, do not resist the chain. This will waste the killer's time uh, more than if you were resisting it. This is kind of futile, but uh, I'm just offering you the opportunity to be annoying, so yeah. Also, Deathslinger is very immobile and doesn't really have the range that the Huntress has. 
So, you you already know what I'm gonna say, right? Uh, I'm gonna say it. Hide. Pyramid Head is the killer that most encourages the W key playstyle. He sets up the little shit trails on loop and also has an ability that can go through walls. So just keep that W key pressed, boy. Uh, practice your marathon run, man. I'm, I'm rooting for you, okay? If you're not boring, though, what you can't do is mind game the power. Like fake going for windows, fake dropping pallets, getting out of his line of sight, and etc. Remember that most anti-tunnel perks are useless against Pyramid Head because, let's say, DS does not activate when you get saved from a cage. Also, Deliverance does not work on cages, and etc. So yeah, when you notice that a teammate is getting tunneled, uh, try your best to body block for them, you know, and also try your best to not step on the shit trail when you're def hook or even earlier. In my opinion, Blights is the second most fun killer to loop in DBD, but he's also the second strongest killer in the game when it comes to winning, simply because Blights has insane mobility, and if he really wants to win, he will never allow anyone to finish any gens, as he will be everywhere at once. If you do find a Blight that's actually trying to have fun with the game instead of winning every single game, and he actually wants to chase you, 360ing his power is very good, and I would say very consistent, because if the Blight is not a god at the game, which most Blights are, but it's very hard to hit the survivor when you're rushing. There is a way around this though, for the Blight player, and Blight mains know how to do it, so yeah, if you notice that you're, you're not being able to 360 him, it might be because you're bad, but it could also be that the killer is just way too good at the game, so yeah. When you're on a loop and you see the blight bang his head against the wall, that means that he's going for a hug tech, most likely. It's kind of like the pig, but just way stronger, so if you're on one side of the loop and the blight is on the other one, he will most likely try to go for this and he will get to you before you manage to run away. So what you can do is pre-running. Whenever you see him bang his head against the, the structure, that means he's going for the rush, you just run away instantly. Again, uh, tight turns are very, very useful against Blight, Blight players, and when he loses sight of you, try to be unpredictable. But mostly, Blight is one of those killers that if the killer is sweaty enough, it is impossible to win against. Blight is in control of the game, so yeah, rushing gens is never uh, prohibited against this killer. It is encouraged. Ah, huh. uh, so so it's one of those games. You, you're you're up against the twins? Does the killer even exist? Uh, okay, so uh, in the rare off chance, very, very rare occasion, by the way, if you're up against this a twins guy, uh, when Victor pounces on you and you're healthy, he's gonna be on you. He's like, he's gonna be grabbed onto you. During the time that Victor is on your back, the killer will not have a power. So when Victor is on you, the twins become just an M1 killer. So what you can do is never uh, take Victor out of you. Eventually he's gonna go away by just, you know, naturally, but you can hold him for as long as you wish to. Just remember that when Victor is on you, the killer will always know where you are and you will also not be able to do gens and you will be uh, oblivious. But again, just like Trapper and Ghostface and a bunch of other killers, if you're comfortable with being chased, just never get rid of Victor and be chased all game. It is a good strategy. If the Twins player is smart though, uh, what they will do is they will injure you first and then use Victor. In that case, it is up to the how good the killer the how good the killer is at aiming Victor because you can't really do much when it comes to avoiding him. Dead Heart is especially good against Twins because if you do get the Dead Heart off, you can kick Victor instantly after. And also, Twins players love slugging. It is very common that Twins just go for a four-man slug before going for hooks because they can be at two places at once. So what you can do is whenever you see your teammate die and he's on the ground, you go instantly heal him because chances are the Charlotte, the, the, the big girl, is going to be all the way across the map and then if they get a down on the other side of the map, they will not be able to get there in time, so you can pick your, your your teammate up. But let's be honest here, you're never gonna play against twins, so this is all useless. Against the trickster, you wanna try your best to only loop high wall loops. If the trickster can knife you over the loop, it is completely useless. You are killing yourself if you do that. The trickster literally becomes the best killer in the game in those scenarios, so stay away from those. Also, never ever run in a straight line when he's shooting at you. Doing this with your camera works for me. I don't know how good it actually is, but do it because I do it. So you should do, you should be doing it. Do what I do uh, and, and what I say, just obey me in general. Plus remember, he's a 4.4 killer, no movement abilities. So hiding, very useful. When Trickster has main events, he's actually very deadly. A lot of people like to trash talk his power, but I think it's very, very good. He can like almost instantly kill you with the fast knife, so 
Try your best to cut the line of sight and uh, stay away from the basement when he's face camping someone with main events. Saving against Trickster in general is very tricky, uh, no pun intended, so be very careful. If he has his knives up and you go for the save, you and your teammate are most likely going to die, so... Yeah. Against the Nemesis, you want to remember that only four vaccine crates spawn each match. It can be three if he has a certain add-on. So that means that there's one vaccine for each survivor. So never vaccinate yourself instantly after getting hit by a tentacle or a zombie or something. I'd even say only do it when you're on death hook. So the other survivors can take multiple vaccines in case they get tunneled. Crouching after vaulting pallets or windows usually means that the tentacle will miss you if you do it fast enough. Also, mind gaming fake pallet drops is insanely good good against Nemesis, and uh, FOV techs actually reign supreme against them when he pulls the tentacle up. Making sounds will alert the zombies to your location, so don't stay on one loop for long periods of time. Also, remember that you can kill zombies with pallets, but it's usually not worth it unless you have the perk that pulls the pallets back up, I forgot what the name of it is. And you can also stun the zombies with flashlights or flashbangs to stun them for a little bit. Against the pinhead, again, it is very hard for the killer to aim the chain. It is very funky and weird. So whenever you see him going for the power, start moving around like a headless chicken and try to be as nimble as possible. That usually will make a miss. Also, running towards the little chain teleport location thingy is kind of like an FOV tech and sometimes will get the killer confused, but other times it'll literally just give him a free hit because you're running towards it. So I'd say just headless chicken. Do not forget about the box. That is literally Pinhead's most powerful ability. When Chain Hunt is active, it is quite literally impossible to escape a chase. Also, my friend Conceptor found a way to do gens while in Chain Hunt. So go check his uh, YouTube charts out. It is actually pretty useful. Artist actually brought back and encouraged the good old W key playstyle as she has no movement abilities and blocks loops with her very uncreative power. So chaining loops is very good against this bird lady, meaning you can go from one loop to another when she sets up the crow there and then just never drop the pallet as long as you keep connecting the loops. She's just never going to be able to, you know, realistically block you. But also just holding W is very, very useful. Also, always repel the crows. I think this goes without saying, but having the crows on you not only means that the killer can injure you across the map and through walls, but he can also see you permanently as long as the crows are on you. You can quickly hop into a locker to get rid of the crows instantly if you didn't know. And when you are looping an artist, you can run into the crow and that's not going to injure you. Listen carefully though, if you run into the crow and not when she throws it, when she actually throws the crows, it is going to injure you if it has a direct line to you. However, if the crow has to go through an object, a wall or something, it is not going to injure you. It is actually just going to put crows on you. So be very careful when you're looping an artist. Uh, if you see that there's no other option, you know, to run away or not or any other loop, just try your best to, to go towards the crow without going to the front side of it because then she can just throw the crow at you and injure you. But mostly, you can also bait the crow. Like whenever you're running towards a location that has a crow aimed at you, you can pretend to go there there and then double back and then when she throws the crow she will not be able to hit you for a little bit she's going to be in the animation of throwing the crow and then you can like run into her and then run to the part where the crow was it is easier if you just watch it so there it is yeah against the onrio do not touch the tapes just don't grab them ever just completely ignore that part of the power. Unless you're playing against a very cracked Onryo, then you have to be turning off the TVs that are close to like your general location so you don't get condemned. But for 90% of you, just ignore it completely. Trust me. Onryo is just an M1 killer, but she is very small. She's like a tiny little bean that chases you around, you know? And she's also, in my opinion, the most brain dead killer in the game because she's very noob friendly. What I mean by that is that whenever she uses her power, Power, she's gonna be passively phasing for a little bit, kind of like the, the the spirit. During that time, you cannot really tell where she is or if she's mind gaming you and believe me I know it is very frustrating so there's no real tip against that just try not to fall for the noob friendly ability that is kind of like that that's my main problem with the Onreal is that she just gives you 
free downs for like not mind gaming and not doing anything because the survivor sometimes just run into just runs into you because you're passively phasing so yeah just don't fall for it i guess <laughs> also remember that when she has no red stain that could mean that she has a you know a perk that removes it but most of the time if she's passively phasing and has no red stain that means she is manifested meaning she cannot hit you kind of like the wraith she has to demanifest first to then hit you and you can also walk through her during that period when she is manifested so you can tell when she is manifested or demanifested because you can walk through her that, that when she's demanifested that you can't okay 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 so there should be a way to counter the dredge but there isn't he kind of just does whatever he wants to and you're blind in certain parts of the game so good luck i guess you can lock lockers when you're doing gens close to them and you can hold the w key as hard as you wish to when you're getting chased because the dredge has the same power as the artist but way stronger so don't try to loop him, just kind of run away from him. Also, he can teleport, so yeah, pay attention to the sound notifications when he hits you and runs away, and then you're injured doing a gen, and then he teleports close to you. Very fun. I love that place now. When in nightfall, just uh, hide, I guess, and close your eyes. Well, well, you don't even have to close your eyes because the game kind of just closes them for you you know that they force you to be blind so good mechanic love it also windows of opportunity is very good against them because even during nightfall you're still going to be able to see the palette but yeah there's not much i can say here it's kind of like the clown just to remove him from the game and the game's going to be better the wesker is in my opinion the funnest killer to loop in dead by daylight everything about him is counterable and you got to be constantly paying attention to what he is doing it encourages you to actually loop structures instead of holding w so this is the first time I'm gonna tell you to find the closest pallet and just loop that for as long as you can because if you run away he's gonna catch you almost immediately. First tip is to always avoid the corners of the map because if he uses power on you on the corner of the map he's actually gonna throw into he's actually gonna throw you into the wall and then when he finishes throwing you into the wall you're not even gonna have anywhere to run to so avoid the corners of the map as much as you can. Fake dropping pallets is almost mandatory against them because he can vault pallets with his power if you drop them early. Long wall loops or loops that have long walls are usually bad because he can uh, use his dashes to hit you before you make it around it. So avoid those if possible. Also pay close attention to when he's pulling up the tentacle because you can hear it when he's pulling it up so you can dodge it sometimes because the, the hitbox on the dash is kind of weird. Unlike the nemesis the vaccine has multiple uses and I encourage you to always uh, get rid of the, the infection as soon as you can because when you're fully infected he can literally one tap you and he's not even going to down you instantly he's actually going to pick you up instantly so you're saving him so much time by staying infected and on top of that when you are fully infected you are slower you are hindered so you're eight percent slower so to reiterate fake drop pallets to make him use power avoid corners of the map not even like corners corners like just avoid the ends of the map like the walls <laughs> because you're not going to have anywhere to run to after the hit so you're going to be chained and downed avoid long wall loops that have long walls <laughs> and vaccinate okay so the nurse is one of those killers that if the killer is good enough he's never gonna lose uh, there is some counterplay uh, against nurse players, but if they're good enough, if you're playing against a sweaty nurse, you are going to lose. The only real, real counterplay to the nurse is when she is bad at the game, so she can only counter herself. It's kind of, kind of like House Targaryen, that they have to destroy themselves because no one else can. That's a Game of Thrones reference. That's actually a House of the Dragon reference. But what you can do if you're playing against a mediocre nurse or a nurse that's trying to have fun is whenever she starts the blinking animation and she has a line of sight towards you, you can fake going back into the nurse to make her blink down and then keep running away. But this is very predictable. This is something that a lot of people do. So what you can do is you can fake double backing and then not double back and then actually double back again. It is the fake, fake double back tech. <laughs> that's gonna make it so the nurse calls you call, calls your bluff and then you actually unbluff and then you go towards her so you see you can like there's a lot of mind games you can do against the nurse like if the nurse is chasing you and you turn a corner into something into a structure or something that she cannot see you over you can like you can you can pretend to keep running but then you can like go back whenever she blinks you know so whenever she doesn't have line of sight towards you you can make a lot of things happen but the main tip is to be unpredictable like don't ever do things that the killer will expect you to do it is a mind field you gotta be really into the, what the killer is doing you gotta understand how the killer plays 
uh, what they eat, where they sleep. Just try your best to be inside nurse's head. And uh, also, indoor maps are very bad for nurse. Uh, you can hide pretty much anywhere. And it's very hard for the nurse, if she's not cracked at the game, to find you when she blinks on top of you in closed maps. So again, just try your best to be nimble and very unpredictable. Also, hide in corners, hide in fucking bathroom stalls on the Midwich Elementary School because it is, again, very disorienting for the nurse when she blinks. Against the Legion, the main thing I'd say is to never heal up. It is a big waste of time to heal up against Legion. The reason is, he's just an M1 killer. If you don't heal up, he literally does not have a power. And looping M1 killers is easy enough that you don't even have to worry about being injured all the time. Only heal up if you cannot immediately get on a gen. Because even if you're healed up, he's gonna be able to hit you like almost immediately and it's way too easy for him to keep you injured so you might as well stay injured i guess unless he has senetophobia then you should probably heal up 360s are very very useful against legion especially if he's, he's in power because if you deny him the power hit that's that's going to make him lose a lot of time and he's not going to be able to chain hit you can also deny his power by hopping into a locker whenever he swings this is very common but be careful if you're going to do it more than once against the same legion because legion can still open lockers when in power so if you're doing it more than once there's always a chance that he just doesn't swing and grabs you out of the locker and as with any other m1 killer try your best to get long chases because that's that's the best way to waste his time he's most likely not going to chase you though because he's a hit and run killer so he's going to hit you and run away and then come back later to try and you know harvest you but if you keep in mind where the pallets are and how the game works it he's pretty much one of the weakest killers in the game against the plague it is very important that you never cleanse either all survivors cleanse at the same time or no one does it is way better to face an m1 killer while injured than power plague when you're held trust me <laughs> her power is just way too powerful to be allowed also if you are going to cleanse make sure that you're never going to get on a gen that's infected right after you cleanse because that's dumb and i know that is very intuitive but i've seen a lot of people just go cleanse get healed and then immediately get on an, uh, on an infected gen and then they get injured again in like five seconds so yeah be careful with that when you get to the late game though you want to cleanse and every time you want to go for an unhook you probably also want to cleanse never cleansing doesn't make it so the plague never has her power it just makes it so she only has her power once as long as you don't cleanse the entire game because the plague already spawns with a with a fountain and there are some add-ons that can give her her power anyway. So just keep this in mind. If you're going for an unhook, you probably want to cleanse. Because if the if the killer is there, you're just going to make him snowball if he gets a hook and a down. But you never want to cleanse while you're doing gens or getting chased. So either all survivors cleanse at the same time or no one does. Alright, and uh, fi I'm finally done with this. I've been making this video for the past three four days actually this took a real long time but i hopefully helped a lot of people with this and uh a 30 minute video i never thought i would make such a long video on this channel but yeah there it is again i hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope you guys uh learned something something from this i don't even know if anyone's listening to this because a lot of you are probably skipping through the video just to watch the, the killer that you don't know how to play against none of you are actually going to watch the video in its entirety and listen to me rumble about the video that i just made at the end of the video and the uh, you're no one's watching this but if you are then uh, i love you thank you thank you for watching okay i'll see you i'll see you next video cutie oh okay all oh, right okay ayo <laughs> ayo the what what <laughs>